everyone. This is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio. And today I'm going to approach paint by numbers as if I am a brand new painter. And I'm gonna show you what I do from the beginning to the end of prep and setup and what you're gonna need. This video will not include flow aid and gesso. Although I'm gonna discuss it, I'm going to try to show you as a newbie, what you need to do is if, if you get your kit and you do not have the special tools that I have talked about in my other videos. Now there might be some really good tips in here for those of you who've been paint by numbering for a while. So I hope that you guys will watch as well. And um, because I think there's always information in a video, even if it's for beginners and you're a little more advanced, there might be some little tidbit of information in there that <clears throat> makes it worth watching. So I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping I can give you a little bit of insight on things that I do. You're gonna to want to be in a very well-lit environment or you need to supplement with a light. And I'm gonna go grab my Ott light, which is designed for art. It is a clear white light. It is perfect for working on stuff like this. But if you don't have those things, which most people do not, get a lamp take off the shade and set the lamp kind of at the eye level or whatever with your piece if you can, or just over the top. Without the shade, it will actually give you more direct light and it will help you see your numbers better. And that is if you don't have another kind of light that you can set up for this purpose. I do want to mention that I had already flattened this canvas on a dry mount board, which is what I have taken to Michael's framing department and heat sealed to this board that's underneath. So I had already done that. So I couldn't show you without having that done already from a rolled canvas what to do. But I will say if you get a canvas and it is rolled, then just roll it out and put some weights or something on the corners just to start with. If it's folded, there are methods to ironing your canvas before you start. You do not wanna paint on a folded canvas. That will affect your paint once you get to those sections and it will not stretch right and it will not be able to flatten it after it has acrylic paint with a dry mount machine. So that is the first rule, flatten your canvas first. I've chosen a painting that has very large sections and this is a good painting to start with for those who are new because it is not as intimidating with large sections as it is with the little tiny sections. But, so I've got my kit, this one's from Paint Plot. And this is the photo, this is the image that I will have once I'm done, if all goes well. But the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got the contents out of my bag. I have my brushes and what these are, are these are hangers to put on the back of your canvas once it's been stretched. If you go and have the stretch on a canvas, um, stretcher bar, then they're giving me these little hooks to hang it. Really, these hooks are pointless. I don't know why they send them if you're not getting a framed canvas. So these are the brushes that most companies send. They are not great quality, but we're gonna work with these today because this is what you would get and this is all you would have if you were a brand new person starting this. I'm just gonna call you guys newbies. So I'm gonna pull that out. I always throw out these little hooks and stuff because that's not how I hang mine anyway. So I always put that aside. These are the brushes this one came with. Now I want you to first, let's take a look. You see this long wonky hair on this brush? That is going to create so many problems. So what I have here is a pair of scissors and I'm gonna trim that little wonky hair off there then my brush is fairly normal and it should be okay to work with. Now, if I notice any more little frays, now see how cheap this is? This little ferrule's about to come off here. Um, that's why I don't use these paint brushes, but I'm gonna try to work with these today, like I said, to show you what to do. And then this paint brush, 
I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, I think it'll be okay. Now, this painting did not come with a reference guide. It did come with a photo, but it didn't come with a reference guide. And a reference guide is going to normally be included in most paint my numbers if they're really high end. And it's going to be a, a smaller version of what you have right here. So it's just gonna be a black and white, you know, printed piece of paper that's going to show you all of these numbers. Because once I cover these numbers, if I can't see them anymore and I need to go back over them, I need to know what color was what. So that's a problem. But the way you remedy that is your next step is gonna be taking a picture of this painting. So basically take photos, nine different photos of each, what I call section. Like if I divided this thing like that, I'm gonna take a photo of each section so that I can zoom in later on my phone and look and see what number, you know, is here if I have to go back and, um, and paint. Or if I've painted over a number by accident while painting another color, I need to know what paint, you know, what color is gonna go beside it. If I've covered it, I don't know, unless I have a reference guide. So. Then you're going to go get what you need to paint. Here's what you're gonna need. I have two cups of water over here clean water. There's about a third of a cup of water in that. And that's as much as I put in there. I'm going to use one of these cups for my dirty, dirty water. So when I first go in with a color, I'm going to use this cup. And then my cleaner water is going to be here to make sure I've rinsed out all colors. Over here, I have a damp paper towel just folded up. It's very, very lightly damp. And it's going to go right here. And this is for cleaning brushes. My next step before I start is I'm going to check my paints and see which ones are going to be opaque and which ones are gonna be transparent and which ones are gonna be semi-opaque. To me, this is the smartest thing to do before you start because it gives you an idea of which colors are going to give you the best coverage, which ones are gonna give you the worst coverage so that you can plan ahead. I will show you. Sometimes me showing is better than trying to explain it. I'm going to take one of my cheapo paintbrushes here, and I'm gonna go with the smaller one because I tend to have a little better control. I'm gonna open up number one. Now the consistency of this paint is pretty creamy, and it looks great. The thing is, is that when you add water to this, it's going to thin it down, and you're gonna get a thinner consistency. That is why I use Flow Aid, and I've shown that in other videos, but I'm not gonna use it here. I'm gonna just use water and show you as if you don't have these tools and you wanna go ahead and get started. But first what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a swatch of each of these colors, and I'm going to make a note on the top of my paint pot as to whether that color is opaque, which means it's gonna cover everything the first time, whether it's semi-opaque, whether it, and that means it's gonna maybe show a little bit of the number through, or whether it is transparent, and that means that number's gonna show through even if I put three or four coats on. I wanna know that in advance before I get to a color. So I'm gonna start, here's a number one. Now I have not gessoed this canvas. Normally you guys know, I gesso my canvas with clear gesso. That is another video altogether. I'm not gonna talk about that in this in this video. So this paint I'm going to use directly and see if it's creamy and it is creamy but it is going to be super thick which means it's not probably going to spread as easily as I'd like. Make sure you rinse your brush if you've never used it before because they'll have some little like um, dried stuff on them and they'll be real stiff so you want to make sure you've rinsed your brush first before you get paint. Now I'm going to go ahead and just get a little bit of paint on here and cover this. But you notice how you cannot see that number one. So this color I would mark as opaque because I got really good coverage off of it right off the bat. As I wash my brush off here, I am coming over here to this damp paper towel and I'm just taking off the excess of that water so it's not drippy. All right, so what I'm gonna do 
is on this side of my canvas that has this extra space, I have numbered one through 24 with a Sharpie. And I'm gonna do a paint swatch of each color right here. And I'm gonna overlap the number a little bit. And that's gonna tell me whether that color is opaque or not. If I can cover this Sharpie with it and it does not show, then I know this is an opaque color and it's gonna be real easy to paint with. So that is gonna be, I've already done one through three and four. So that I'm gonna mark on my paint pot that opaque, all those four are opaque colors. You want opaque colors. That's what makes this easy to use. It's when you have transparent colors that really cause a lot of grief and frustration. All right, so I'm going in with number five. I'm not gonna talk through this. I'm just gonna go ahead and make this little paint swatch over here. And the reason I'm gonna do this also is because when I'm painting, if I've covered a number, but I really need another coat and I can't see my number, I'm gonna be able to go over here and go, oh, that's number six. You know, that's the color for number six. So it's gonna help me as a reference.
this. So you don't see this really harsh separation of line and it looks more blended like an actual uh, tulip wood. Those advanced techniques are gonna come up very soon. So make sure you watch for those. I hope this has been helpful to those of you who are new at Paint by Number. I hope it's helped you to feel more relaxed about the process. And, you know, I really hope that you enjoy what you're doing when you're doing it with this uh, hobby. Please go join the group. It's growing pretty rapidly. That's a place where you can go and show your work, ask questions, um, that you can share information back and forth. If there's a coupon for a company that you trust, you can add that coupon there. There's no affiliation. I don't have any affiliation with any of these companies. So I just want us to have a group that's kind of a special interest thing where you go and feel pretty comfortable with other people who are you know, in the same boat you're in. So make sure you join the group. I'm putting that, in, that link in the description for you. And um, I'll also put the link for Paint Plot in the description for this particular painting. And I hope you guys will come back and keep watching for my videos and hope that you find them helpful. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Don't unlike, that's just rude. And, um, <laughs> and comment. And I hope to see you back soon. Thank you as always for watching.